Finally, we've come to another episode of Advanced Sci-Fi Civilizations Too Stupid to Really Exist. It's another human contender, and this one is so stupid they barely even qualify as an advanced sci-fi civilization. It's the United Nations, from Pacific Rim and the movie Novelization. Before Guillermo del Toro inexplicably cleaned up at the Oscars with his charming film about a woman in love with a manfish, he somehow failed to ruin his chances by giving us this whole deal. Strap in for a nuanced, understated exploration of humanity's theoretical tendency to unite in the face of adversity, delivered to us via giant robots punching alien monsters. It's either that or an infomercial for the most expensive exercise machine ever conceived. Whatever the case, I ain't buying it. You're gonna get your ass kicked. I tried it once. Once. It's a movie inspired by a range of content, and when I say range, I mean Japanese cinema and anime, or western stuff that was inspired by Japanese cinema or anime. The most original thing about Pacific Rim probably being the color palette, which I would describe as psychedelic Play-Doh vomit. It's a sensory assault in more ways than one that borders on the juvenile. Just go with it. Let your mind drift and enjoy those hammer fists. In Pacific Rim, the question of whether we're alone in the universe has been answered in monstrous fashion. It's a world that was not unlike our own until a portal opened up at the bottom of the Pacific, unleashing a series of gigantic alien creatures, each one mercilessly attacking the cities of the Pacific Rim, leading the countries of Earth to come together under the banner of the United Nations and settle on the absolutely insane slash awesome strategy of meeting this alien threat with some mechanical monsters of our own, as is our custom. This being arguably the last good decision this newly empowered global authority ever makes. Because ironically, despite representing the nations of Earth and having united in their title, the UN doesn't exactly embody the spirit of cooperation. In fact, they come to represent the worst humanity has to offer. Well, next to this prick anyway. And they manage to give that impression while barely even featuring in the movie. But since their poor decision making affects every aspect of humanity's response to the kaiju, we can still define their incompetence by their few actions or lack thereof. Though I have to admit, we won't have too many individuals to throw tomatoes at. And yes, I'm sure this version of the UN shares a few parallels with the real life organization, but I'll leave you to throw fists over that one in the comments. Also, another bit of housekeeping. I am more than aware that if Del Toro and Co actually listened to me, we would never have been gifted with this gloriously ridiculous spectacle. If it wasn't already obvious, like Pacific Rim itself, Media Zealot is best enjoyed with more than a few grains of salt. Point 1. The UN fails to develop more practical weaponry than the Jaegers. When the first kaiju trespasser emerged from the breach, it laid waste to San Francisco and numerous other cities, shrugging off most conventional weapons before eventually being brought down by several tactical nukes. Six days and 35 miles later with tens of thousands of people dead. But many of those people were probably killed by the nukes, so let's not give trespasser more credit than it deserves. This event leaving parts of the Bay Area heavily irradiated and uninhabitable for centuries. So yeah, though the nukes were probably a necessary response at the time, the situation isn't exactly ideal. Over the following year, three more kaiju emerge from the breach and are brought down in a similar manner, proving that at least some of our weaponry can be effective, although the level of collateral damage is obviously unsustainable. So the United Nations funds the Jaeger program and founds the Pan Pacific Defense Corps, a military alliance of the Pacific Rim countries backed by the rest of the world. Although the Jaegers are a somewhat inelegant solution to the threat of the kaiju, they're ultimately a roaring success, slaying every single creature that comes out of the breach for over a decade, though not without the loss of many Jaegers and their pilots. And throughout all this time, the UN and PPDC has seemingly ignored all other avenues of conventional weapon development, aside from some Jaeger-specific weapons such as plasma cannons. But with a decent amount of kaiju war experience, the resources, labor, and expertise of much of the world to work with, is this honestly the best solution they can come 
come up with. This is an unnecessary indulgence. Like the Novans and their space harpoons in our last entry, it is somewhat understandable the UN initially stuck with what works. But surely they can develop a form of weaponry far more practical and less expensive than these things. If Jaegers are capable of killing Kaiju with their weaponry or through sheer brute force, there shouldn't be any reason why other offensive options can't be just as effective. The Jaegers are a temporary band-aid at best. Okay, we're going with giant robots again. Alright, real original guys. Under normal circumstances, humans are usually up for a good old-fashioned arms race, designing specialized ballistic projectiles to deal with anything from body armor to bunkers buried underground. Now, under the threat of annihilation, you can't tell me we couldn't design specialized ordnance to deal with the silicon-based flesh of the kaiju, preferably mounted on weapons platforms that can keep their distance, minimizing asset losses. Surely our conventional military forces only need a bit of a tweak to be effective and far more affordable than the Jaegers. In fact, they seem to already have everything they need. Striker Eureka's anti-kaiju missiles deal with mutivore in short order. These things should be mounted on absolutely everything. The Germans are gonna go nuts for that stuff. Once they have the effective weaponry, they could then develop appropriate units to deliver the payloads, such as drones, fast bombers, and fighter aircraft, preferably with pilots smart enough to keep their distance. The best solution is probably suicide drones, which have recently proven their effectiveness in the field in real life. There should be a stream of these things pummeling the kaiju the second they emerge from the water. And while you're at it, whatever ordnance or delivery system ends up being most effective, target it relentlessly at the kaiju's most vulnerable vulnerable spots. A couple of reckless Aussies fired a harmless flare into Leatherback's eye and it was enough to send it reeling. They should be targeting the kaiju's sensory organs until it falls or is too blinded to be a threat. Obviously, whatever weaponry they develop should also be deployed around every coastal city. Hell, grab the plasma cannons off a Jaeger, hook it up to a dedicated nuclear reactor, and then hopefully with its own power source it won't take forever to power up anymore. And let's not discount other forms of experimental weaponry that I'm sure we could perfect should the political will exist. Railguns, particle beams, and other energy weapons could become powerful enough to down kaiju, just like the plasma cannons. Since the UN are already spending trillions, they might as well mount it on an orbital platform, sass the kaiju from orbit, making it impossible for them to strike back against the hardware. It's also possible that a toxin or bioagent could kill kaiju. They may be genetically engineered aliens, but they're still living beings, and therefore they should have other biological vulnerabilities. But instead of pursuing the numerous development paths available to them, it seems the humans of Pacific Rim are relying almost exclusively on the Jaegers, which aside from the disadvantage of their hefty price tag, are slow to deploy and rely on pilots who are usually employed on their ability to drift and brawl, without much concern for their temperament or other traits. At the very least, you'd think they'd throw some money at making these things autonomous or remotely piloted, something that is left to a private company to develop in the second movie. So resigned to their expensive Jaeger strategy, the UN is inevitably put in a difficult position when their coffers start to run dry. But it's safe to say the big solution to their problems leaves more than a little to be desired. Point 2. They abandon the Jaeger program in favor of a wall. So after years of sitting on their hands and relying on the Pan Pacific Defense Corps to act as their only line of defense, the countries of the United Nations are supposedly going bankrupt. Which is weird because countries can't really go bankrupt, at least not in the same way an individual can. Racking up shitloads of debt and defaulting on your loans still sounds a hell of a lot better than being dead. There's no doubt their economic situation would be catastrophic, but it's also completely unavoidable. Inflation, debt, and economic growth should be the least of their worries. Obviously, with humanity's existence on the line, every country in the world should be contributing every cent and resource they have. But nah, after losing 26 Jaegers over a number of years, the UN decides to sunset the Jaeger program, shutting down the Shadow Dome deployment bases, decommissioning almost all of the Jaegers, and only agreeing to fund the remaining for a short while. And they're doing this without any viable offensive alternative. It's utter lunacy. So the PPDC are forced to scale down their operations drastically, relying on criminals for funding, illegal Russian back channels for their Tekken weaponry, and working out of their last remaining base in Hong Kong. But considering their actions, the UN must have some sort of card left to play, right? 
Oh dear, it's a humble wall. An obstacle that even humans have little trouble getting past, let alone gigantic alien monsters. Have any of you ever seen this creature? And how is this a less costly solution, considering the sheer amount of coastline involved? The UN's overconfidence in the wall, brought about by the flawed assumption that the kaiju had avoided the completed sections due to them being unable to get through it. Are you funning me? So? When the most logical conclusion to draw is that they simply weren't bothered with it yet while there was still exposed cities to attack. Did the UN forget that the kaiju are escalating in strength, ability and frequency and are seemingly able to adapt to specific human strategies? Before the wall is even finished we get a double kaiju event, unleashing a flying beast who could swoop over the wall like it was nothing, and a gorilla like monster who could probably climb over the thing. It sure seems like this wave of kaiju has anticipated the wall. It is conceivable that the aliens have been able to intensify their response now that they are familiar with our capabilities. Which isn't surprising since the alien psionic hive mind is said to transmit a signal in real time back through the breach to the precursors, allowing them to incorporate appropriate responses to our weaponry and tactics in the following kaiju iterations. Even in the unlikely event that the kaiju couldn't get past this thing, the precursors could simply overrun the Pacific Ocean with kaiju, set up camp and build up a force that could finish us off once and for all. In a desperate effort to save humanity from its own idiocy, Pentecost appeals to these spineless bureaucrats to at least provide funding for one last big offensive aimed at closing the breach for good. One Excuse me, Marshal. last chance, Excuse one me. final assault with everything Listen we've got. Me. The Jaeger program is dead, Marshal. But they refuse to front the cash for even that modest endeavor. All the while, the UN are cowering in their inland bunkers, letting the rich buy their way in. <laughs> The UN and their backers only marginally delaying the inevitable. It's only a matter of time until the kaiju are digging up bunkers looking for the last remaining humans. What, 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 what are we gonna do? These are not enemies you can hide from indefinitely. The only real course of action is to stop them at the gates. Naturally, the peons who actually built the wall are abandoned to a more immediate fate. Concerningly, they weren't even being paid to build this thing, receiving mere rations for their work. Which sounds like a great way to get a shoddily constructed wall. Surprising no one at all, very soon after the UN announces their intentions, the next kaiju to make landfall smashes through the wall easily, leaving it to, you guessed it, a Jaeger to take it down. Surely now, with this reality check, the UN will continue their support of the PPDC. But nope, Striker Eureka, who just saved Sydney, goes straight back into decommissioning before being scooped up by Pentecost. The UN persevering with their ridiculously ineffective monument to fear, as the Marshal so aptly puts it. And then they disappear completely. I believe you are having a typically human response to circumstances which are frightening and inexplicable. But despite their lack of presence, their strategic oversights remain plain to see and seemingly without end. Point 3. The UN suffers from a near total lack of strategic planning. As if the UN's woeful lack of weapons development and their abandonment of the Jaeger program weren't bad enough, they've also failed to utilize existing technology and basic strategies that could prove highly effective against the Kaiju, perhaps even more so than the Jaegers and with a more manageable ongoing cost. Firstly, during normal Jaeger versus Kaiju battles, why aren't conventional military forces at the very least providing support? Every moment there is distance between the Jaeger and the Kaiju, they should be pounding these beasts with everything they have. Stunning or preoccupying the Kaiju, allowing the Jaeger to recover and counterattack when appropriate. Even when the Kaiju is inevitably down, the UN and its member nations are failing to capitalize on the Kaiju's remains, often abandoning these highly valuable corpses, leaving it to the criminals to scoop up all the kaiju goodies. The authorities should be all over every single kaiju carcass, analyzing it for weaknesses, searching for clues as to their origins, and perhaps most importantly, looking for any potential technological gains we can glean from them. Though at this current point in time, Pentecost has an arrangement with Hannibal Chow. In the past, local government officials were apparently taking bribes from criminals to look the other way, forcing the UN on occasion to go begging for kaiju parts from the aforementioned 
and low lives. Obviously, these kaiju sites should be locked down by the UN the second the kaiju falls. Not to mention anything of the necessary cleanup to deal with the contamination caused by the kaiju's blood. This strange situation results in the world's foremost kaiju scientists knowing less about their physiology than a criminal kingpin. Which brings us to the next issue. The UN's R&D isn't just lacking in the military department but is also seen in their almost total ignorance of the kaiju themselves. The K-Science Division, which was apparently a thing before the UN scuttled the PPDC, seems to have figured out almost nothing about the breach, the kaiju or their origins. There's still no indication of where they're coming from. With the kaiju's genetic similarities, their evolving offensive capabilities and the nature of the breach itself. It doesn't take a kaiju scientist to come to the conclusion that these things are being designed and sent by an intelligent alien species. But now, answering all of these questions has been left to an underfunded two-man team of belligerent nerds who are constantly at each other's throats. Newt eventually coming to the obvious revelations after drifting with the kaiju hive mind. In terms of defenses, we can do a hell of a lot better than this shitty wall. It's been a decade since the first kaiju attack. It should have been obvious to the countries of the Pacific Rim that residential coastal cities as we know them are no longer viable, yet everyone is still just hanging around on the coast. Australia, okay, I kind of get it. Clinging to life on the edge ain't nothing new for the Aussies. I wouldn't want to live further in either. The gargantuan alien monster attacks are probably preferable to what you guys already have to deal with out back. Aussies aside, it would be best to decentralize the population centers, spreading people out and obscuring their presence, giving the kaiju no obvious targets. The UN had their chance to reorder the world to best face the kaiju threat, and they've failed miserably. But since the cities are still present, why can't they at least put up some proper defenses? Use the Jaegers or the cities themselves to lure the kaiju into a carefully constructed kill zone. Blast them with mines, giant claymores, or whatever else can hurt them. And while we're on the mining strategy, let's make it even more effective and minimize collateral damage to its lowest possible level. Okay, sure, we can't send bombs through the breach, but at the very least, they could be mining the hell out of the area above the portal. And considering this battleground is at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, nukes are now a fairly viable option. Fallout was the world's main gripe against their regular use, and now it should be close to a non-issue. We'd need a specialized deep sea nuke and delivery system, and there is always going to be some level of collateral damage, but this all seems fairly attainable. The Jaegers can withstand the pressures at that depth, and we already know the nukes are effective against the kaiju, even underwater. They should be blowing them to hell before they can even emerge properly. The strongest tactical move is always the one in which you will reap the highest gain at the lowest cost. Yeah, there are fault lines of plenty around the Mariana Trench, but we can deal with a few earthquakes and tsunamis. That's nothing compared to allowing the kaiju to run amok. And if they're serious about containing the radiation, collateral damage, kaiju blue, and the kaiju themselves, and since they've already gone to the effort of constructing massive walls covering crazy distances, including ocean stretches according to the novel, then why not simply wall off the entire Mariana Trench and confine the repercussions to that region as best you can? Cleanup and containment would become far easier. Line the wall with appropriate offensive weaponry as a contingency plan and you're away laughing. But I'm afraid afraid we can't expect anything this carefully planned from the UN. While they're off hiding somewhere, it's left to our brash cornball mech jocks to not only do the fighting, but make the most important decisions. We either sit and wait or we take these flare guns and do something really stupid. Which kind of sounds like a great way to get your government overthrown and replaced with a military dictatorship. Luckily, Pentecost and his band of absolute heroes are more concerned with saving the entire planet. We intercepted the kaiju and saved everyone on that boat. <laughs> So they're off for a two on three boss fight and to make things worse, it's an underwater level, taking the last of their forces for a desperate final assault on the breach. Which thanks to a near total lack of planning and research is basically just them going in without any goal beyond dropping a nuke, which they already know doesn't work. The only tenuous hope they have is that the predicted size and number of the coming kaiju will be enough to wedge the breach open wide enough to allow a nuke to get through. It's some kind of plan I guess. Thankfully, a 
United Newton Herman figure out at the 11th hour that surprise surprise to get inside the alien gash you need the right kind of DNA. I wouldn't want to go in there with that limited amount of information. After all this time and the world's best minds presumably at their disposal surely someone should have thought of this before. So with Pentecost valiantly sacrificing himself and Aussie shithead getting a redemption arc he didn't deserve. It's up to Gypsy Danger and her crew to traverse the breach and assault the powers behind the kaiju. And oh boy, Roland Emmerich would be proud because we're going to nuke us some goddamn aliens. Today we are cancelling the apocalypse! Sealing the breach and punishing the precursors severely for their overconfidence. Despite our infighting, the power of human cooperation triumphing over the more unified alien hive mind. And proving definitively that there isn't any kind of problem humans can't punch their way out of. These are human beings, why don't you say hello? Though you probably wouldn't come to that conclusion by looking at our timid, incompetent leadership. This miraculous victory ultimately achieved not because of the UN but in spite of them. If the fate of the world had been left to them, humanity would be extinct and the precursors would have themselves a sweet new polluted planet to take advantage of. Though this isn't quite where the UN story ends, the war between humanity and the precursors continuing in the second movie. And this time they take even more of a backseat but they do seem to have somewhat come to their senses. Despite the breach being closed, they're seemingly now fully funding the Jaeger program. We could have used that when the monsters were actually attacking guys. But of course, they're still not completely without fault. We get a small hint that they've failed to properly organize aid and assistance for the coastal cities. And due to their shitty pay, they're losing experienced Jaeger pilots to the private sector. Weirdly, it's left to inexperienced kids to act as the Jaeger vanguard. Not that the UN probably even knows about this. As usual, when the shit hits the fan, they're nowhere to be seen, failing to provide any semblance of leadership. I guess they have to leave a bit of idiocy around the place just to remind us they still exist. As for the precursors, though I was initially skeptical as to whether they met the required threshold of stupidity. Yes, shockingly enough, I do have some loose standards. After reading the novelization, I'm happy to confirm the asinine nature of their civilization is beyond all doubt. But I decided to go with the UN for this round because I felt they deserved to take a beating first. Pacific Rim being yet another big old feel good exercise in which humanity inexplicably kicks alien ass. Or smashes alien face to be more precise. But don't worry, the precursor's time is coming, I've already got the notes.